It's still Prime Morning on Joy Prime. Get interactive with us. It's Monday and you know that every Monday we bring your women in business. Women who are excelling in the world of entrepreneurship, in owning businesses, every single thing that you need to know about business. We bring women who are doing exceptionally well in that and they share their stories, their journeys and throw out uh, an advice or two for you out there. So it's time for you to start penning down all that you need to pen down. If you have a business idea that you want to develop or you are now thinking of exactly what to do when it comes to business, all right? My guest is C. Ted, and she's geared up for a great conversation. She's geared up to walk us down the lane of her journey as being the owner of Aquatic Food Limited. But this video has every single thing that you need to know about her for now, but she's in person here as well to delve deeper. Take a look at the video. Mabel Ibadun Kwashi is a visionary entrepreneur and a driving force behind Aquatic Food Limited, a company dedicated to the production and processing of fish specializing in tilapia and catfish. Since its incorporation in June 2018, Mabel has led AFL with a staff strength of seven, comprising four permanent and three casual members. AFL stands out for its diverse range of fish products, including fish sausages, nuggets, popcorns, crackers, cakes, Kobe powder, boneless Kobe, and Kobe chunks. Mabel's innovative approach aims to provide a variety of healthy protein options, catering especially for those who refrain from meat consumption due to religious, health or personal reasons. In addition to her role at AFL, Mabel is a driving force behind the AFL Incubation Hub, an entrepreneurial center focused on training youth, women and farmers in the aquaculture value chain. The hub offers consultancy, mentorship, business idea development, and support in establishing new ventures. Mabel's passion lies in not only delivering quality fish products, but also in empowering others. With a commitment of training farmers, youth, and women to become successful aquapreneurs, Mabel is contributing to the growth and sustainability of the aquaculture industry. Her leadership has positioned AFL as a beacon of innovation and training in the field, making a positive impact on both the industry and the community. There you have it, our uh, guest for this morning on Women in Business is Mabel Ibudon Kwashi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Yourself? I'm excited <laughs> to meet you in person. I'm excited for us to get into this conversation because, I mean, when I saw the profile, I'm like, fish powder, fish sausages, uh, um, Kobe powder, Kobe powder. Uh, boneless Kobe. <laughs> fish popcorn yeah fish popcorn <laughs> this is amazing but i want you to walk us down um it it it, it all got birth in june 2018 that's yeah. when you bought the dream yeah. reality how did it start okay so my private business life started when i wanted to do my mba with the catholic university of milan and part of the condition was to bring a business idea. So at that time, I was working in a bank. And the only thing that came to mind at that time, because um, I was an RM and I had visit visited some fish farms. And I was excited about the little fish, the fingerlings growing to the big fish and then a table size for us to consume. So that was the idea that I presented. So throughout the course, that was what we used. So before I finished the course, my, my business coach uh, told me to start the farming before I even finished the course. So I started. 
But uh, fish farming, we all know, is not that easy. Okay, wait, so um, your business coach, is it that during the course of you presenting all that you were gathering, the information that you were gathering in school, he saw that you were enjoying what you were doing or you were doing very well with your research and all that. What would you say that he saw about you or your presentation or your work that he decided that, you know what, I will advise you to go into fish farming? I think that he saw... Uh, the entrepreneurial skills, but I was still working in a bank. Okay. And it was his way of pushing me into going into my own business. Oh, because okay. the, then you'll be very comfortable in the bank. I mean, after at the end of the month, you get, your, sal get your, money. your yeah. salary and all that. So yeah. if you don't get the push, sometimes it's difficult for you to take that decision to make the jump. So I believe that was what he saw. Mm -hmm. And he worked with NBSSI, so you, I can understand um, his push at that time. So I went into the farming, but um, I made a lot of, I, I lost the business, the fish farming itself. That was 2014. But then um, I was always interested in teaching women and other things. So I had started the course in incubation. That is business incubation. So I went for the training in Uganda and we visited some of the factories and business research centers. And that was the first time I saw fish sausage. Oh, okay. So, but, but I hadn't thought of, of, of having it as a business. Right. But when the fish farming failed, then I said to myself, I'm in the fish business already, so what can I do? What were the types of fish that you were farming at that time? Tilapia. Okay, only yeah, tilapia. I tried catfish too, but basically it was tilapia. Okay. Yeah. At that time, I don't think catfish was a catch. No, no, it, it wasn't. As it is now. No, it wasn't. So tilapia was yes. on top. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And tilapia is still on top. Yeah, it yeah. still is on top. Yeah. But at that time, what made you um, lose the business? What happened? Well, a number of factors. Um, mortalities, you know, um, we have the periodic, um, the water turning upside down and lack of oxygen oh. and I mean so many issues and I didn't know the science of it right so I had to rely on other people I was learning on the job so if you are not there constantly you know what happens in every business mm. Mm. Uh, if you run a business so the last straw was um, harvesting and almost half of the fish were gone and then we realized that the net was torn how it happened, because I have divers who are supposed to check every now and then. So almost everything was gone, and I thought that it's a heavy investment. So it was a pond? It was, it, no, it was, in, it was in a lake. It was in a lake? Yes, so it's oh. a cage, cage farming. Oh. So supposedly the fish swam away. In the, oh. I mean, that's what happens. Yeah. That's what happens, they'll tell, but then they have a way of taking the fish out of the out of the water mm. so it's a heavy investment and i was thinking that to invest again in it you need to look for more investment to put in it for which you are not too sure you will get the returns uh, at every point in time unless you stay with them you live with them you maybe i should you even have to be there be all, all, the all the time yeah. yes yeah, all the time i was okay. living in accra okay and going down i thought i was being, where was it located akusi okay so I mean, the factors, it was just one factor. So I just thought that let me just relax and see the next step. Then I remembered that um, I had seen the fish sausage. So I said, okay. So I started the fish sausage in my kitchen. Okay. Um, and it was very difficult to get it uh, out because if you go on the net, you will not find fish sausages there. The meat, the, the beef and the pork were very... Yeah, yes. that's what we are used So to. Okay. then I have to go to sites like the Eastern countries where they eat a lot of fish and see whether I could fish out one or two. So with the formulation for beef, I used the same thing for fish. So I tried it and I gave to friends and other things. So they formed it for me because then when they tasted it, they said, no, it's too salty or spices. This one is too loud. This one... I mean, they gave me orders. So when I was okay with it and then also um i attended a lot of trade fairs just doing samplings i wasn't selling just sampling letting creating the awareness that such a product um it's in ghana so then when i was settled with that then i went back to uganda i went to the institute that is uganda 
um, Iuri Industrial Research and Incubation Center. So I went back and I learned how to do the face as in commercial quantities. You know, what I'm even thinking of is, even if you want to venture into such a business, I think if you do not have quite an amount of money, it will be quite difficult for you to get into it. Because you seem to have put in a lot. Yeah, I did. But now, um, if, 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 uh, if the technology was here, and I didn't have to travel back uh, to Uganda to mm -hmm. learn, it would, would have, have been just as simple, because I started with a small uh, processing record, sausage maker, meat mixer with a sausage, sausage um, staffer attached. Okay. And that was like 230 CDs or so. Oh. That's all that I needed at that time. And then your raw material. Mm. But back then, because it wasn't there, I had to go travel all the way and then learn how to do it. But you know, um, every business, you start small. You look for the simple, small machines that you can use. Then as you progress, you look for the sophisticated one in order to do your, your or even you do it manually. You capture the market, then you scale up. So, yes, you need money, but sometimes not that huge sums of money to start your business. What, what, what was the type of fish that you were using for this? Uh, so, I, I tilapia. Tilapia. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to use a fish that was readily available. And because I, I was doing tilapia, I knew that eventually I'll go back and grow tilapia just to process yeah, for my product. Yeah, yeah. So I chose what I think will be easily available on the market instead mm -hmm. of... Because I've, I've, I've done with marine sea fish and I, I can do it. It's possible. Okay. But then the availability, for instance, I use butter, butter fish. Sometimes you go to the market and you can't find it. Oh. But tilapia, we it's all know, always, it's always available. Yeah, and I yeah. can grow it if if the need be. So for continuity, sustainability, I thought I will use the, um, the fresh water fish. So you started, off the, you started off with fish sausages. Yeah. And it was from your kitchen. Yeah. That's where you started. Yeah. So with, before, you know, we get into the whole machine and everything, for somebody, for somebody who cannot really afford the, mince, the mincer, yeah. you could do your, with your blender, right? Yes, you could do it with your... You can even use knife. Just cut into smaller pieces. You know how the, the, the Koreans or the Chinese chop their mm. onions? Mm. You could chop mm. little, little bit. Because the thing is, uh, you don't really have to get it very smooth. Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, there are various types of uh, the sausages, like, but you can chop into tiny bits and mix with your ingredients. Yeah. They are good to go. Yeah. In fact, there are some products who de they deliberately leave some chunks even in it. So then why worry? Mm. So your knife alone can even... Uh, it's just that it's, it's, it's a bit tedious because you have to do the filleting, you have to remove the skin and yeah. then chop into tiny pieces before. Assuming you are doing maybe um, 10 kilos or something, it's, it's, it's quite uh, yeah. a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you take off the skin, you debone, and then you use only the flesh itself. Only the flesh itself. Or, wow. And then you add your ingredients. Yeah. So the ingredients is up to you, whatever you to want you. to use. Yeah. You just do your mixing. Yeah. There are certain ingredients that you have to... So for instance, fish doesn't bind easily like the pork. Pork has a lot of fat and other things, mm. so it will bind. But the fish, you have to add maybe um, some binders like um, cassava starch or corn starch to make it bind. Yeah, bind. But yeah. Um, I tell everybody that the spices is up to you. Okay. How you want to, you want to use the fish will go well with, with um, garlic and ginger. But mm -hmm. the others is up to you, what you want to, to do with it. So you, you, you just... Or the kind of taste that you would want to you, be known for. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's incredible. So after you got into, you started with the fish sausages. So what was, which one was the next? Which products was the next one? The, the next one was uh, the Kobe's. Actually, mm -hmm. so the fish sausage was a hit, and everybody <laughs> was like, yeah. everybody was like, wow. Yeah. I just love taking pictures of when I go for <laughs> exhibitions and I'm sampling. Some will go and come back and say, Madam, I didn't taste the thing. Well, can you give me? Oh, wow, this is nice. So I was so happy with it, you know. But it wasn't selling um, as, as much as I'd wanted at that okay. time. 
Uh, it they was are still talking about 2018, right? Yes. Oh, we had now moved to 2019. 19, 20. 20, yes. Okay, then yeah. this one, we are talking about COVID hitting. COVID hitting, right. yes. So, but before COVID, COVID did, mm. um, I just uh, put a message on Facebook and asked my friends, why have you stopped eating Kobe? And that was where I got all the ideas from. Because some said um, the salt was too much. Yeah. Some were, were not sure how it was. You know, you saw, you saw the, the clip on the Kobe on the floor. Yeah. The yes. That was the first yeah. time I learned how to do Kobe. And I wasn't happy with it, drying it on the floor. Oh. You understand? So it's, it's on the street, on the floor. And a lot of things will happen to your fish. When the wind blows, a lot of uh, bacteria, yeah. fecal matter, yeah. that blows over it. And I wasn't happy, but it was because I had taken the fish from the water. The women were just, were haggling with pricing, and I decided to do Kobe. So that actually, that was how I learned to, to do Kobe. It was out of a situation. So they talked of the hygienic condition. They talked about, uh, you know, uh, there was a talk about uh, these chemicals that the women were using in preserving Kobe at that mm. time. So I said, okay, then he gave me an idea. And then because of the bones, I know tilapia has a lot of bones and I know people do, some people do not take it because of their bones. So I was filleting anyway. If I'm doing the sausages, I fillet. Yeah. So I said, why not? So I started with the boneless Kobe. Okay, so tilapia is what is used for Kobe. Yes, tilapia is what is used okay. for Kobe. Okay. Uh -huh. So I started with the boneless Kobe. And then I got the idea, so, so why not have some chunks so that you just put in your stew. Instead of you cutting the Kobe into your stew, you have it already in your stew. So every bite, contemporary, your ex to you, your garden you have a bite of the you Kobe. You have the bite of the Kobe. <laughs> then as I was trying to formulate it, I, I will get some powder. So friends will talk to me, okay, okay, so why don't you do just the powder and then the chunk, or a mixture of it and all that. So that's how come I got uh, the, the chunk, the powder, and then the boneless. Okay. Incredible. Right, so uh, before we continue, right, let's go back to the Kobe a little bit. Okay. I, 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 I thought that the salt pita, uh, no, not, not the salt, salt pita, the, uh, the big salt, what's it called? Adan salt. Adan, Adan salt, yes. Mm, the rock, ro the rock, rock one, salt. The rock one, yeah. rock salt. I thought that was what was used in preserving. Yes. The, the, yeah. the, the fish. Yes, yes. So what exactly does the salt do to it? So the salt um, draws the water from the fish. The, that's the first thing. Okay. So then you, you've started the preservation process. Mm. So once the salt is in, by the time you take it out of the salt, it's, it's, it's firm. It's no more the soft fish that you know. Okay. It's firm. Then when you dry it, you preserve again. By putting some more. No, 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 no. So when you when when so you put the salt on, you spread the salt on the fish, and you leave it for about three days. Okay. After the three days, or sometimes two days, depending on, you, you find a lot of water. It, it has collected a lot of water in the bowl. So you just take the fish out. So all the water or the fluid in the in the fish comes out. So then uh, it starts the preservation process. And then you dry it to take the extra moisture that is in it. Yeah. Well, quite a number of times when you buy Kobe, you would find um, some of the rock salt, salt. in it, yeah. inside yeah. it. Yeah. I think they, they, you, I've, seen, I've seen the Kobe, which is not that fair. That's not, that's, doesn't look as dry as this one. Okay. It's, it's wet. And I think it's also another way. I, I, I'm I not sure. Could, let, let me try it and turn it this way. Yeah, so we can have a better view. Yeah, I'm not sure whether maybe they dry it. Mm -hmm. They dry it because it's, it's, it's like the momoni type of... Uh -huh. okay. But this one is dry, so you can keep it one year, two years, even mm -hmm. without putting it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, because sometimes it's, you have to go through so much work to take out the salt. You have to literally soak the cold yeah. water. Yeah. You pour the water out, soak it again, yeah. because you don't want too much salt yeah. in your stew or your soup. So when I started, the moment I, I take it out to dry, I wash the excess salt off oh, before I dry it. okay. Yes. Okay, that's nice. And then we came to the Kobe powder, the Kobe chunks. I mean, the Kobe chunks, it will just, you know, um, it will 
shorten your amount of time with the cooking. Yeah. Because sometimes when you buy the Kobe and then you're trying to cut them, it's quite difficult. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you have the bones inside. Yes, and all that. yes. It's, it's very difficult. So having the chunks already makes it quite yeah. easier for you to put in your stew. And then now we have fish popcorn. So let me talk about the powder. The powder, okay, the powder. The powder is uh, what I tell you, fapiti mukeke. Mm. Because sometimes we want to cook with just the flavor of Kobe, not to have the Kobe itself. So I've heard people say, uh, let me put the head, let me cut a piece yeah, of the head yeah. and put and drop, in the Kobe. and drop and drop <laughs> exactly and drop in my stew or yeah. in my soup yeah. and all that. But the powder serves that purpose. So just sprinkle in and then you are good to go. Okay. You can do it with the soup. Yes, yeah, soup. Stew. I know a, a friend in the UK even said she uses in seasoning her, her, her I mean, other stuff she, as seasoning. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. So which other products do we have? Because we have uh, prawn crackers. So. So, so this is tilapia crackers. Tilapia crackers. Yes, okay. this is tilapia crackers. Hey. And then um, I have the nuggets. Um, fish nuggets. Fish nuggets. Okay. Using catfish. Okay. Catfish is very tasty. Yes. But we are taught to taste to eat catfish smoked. Even that when we put in our soup is very nice. But if you take it fresh, yesterday in my church we had a women's bazaar, women's market, mm. and I did the fish nugget with fry yam. Before the second mass was over. My fish was sold out. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now I'm in trouble because everybody wants me to prepare some and send to them. It's very tasty. Okay. Catfish, if you eat it fresh. So I do the catfish nuggets also. Then I talked about um, the, 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 these ones I have, the FDA, the crackers I don't. It's, it's a new product. It's the okay. latest one that okay. I... It's yet to be it's on yet the market. But the Kobe, uh, the sausage... It's, all, it's, it's FDA approved. Mm. So I have other ones that are with the FDA. So the fish chips, I have fish chips. The popcorn I haven't put on the, on, I haven't done that yet. But the, then I have um, Kobe in oil. Kobe in oil? Yes. So it's just like um, you have your sardine. Sardine, yeah. yeah. So this one, the salt has been taken out again mm -hmm. and it's been prepared and... Um, <laughs> I see. So Kobe oil. In oil. Yes, yeah. in oil. Yeah, so that is also yet to come out. Okay. And then the fish popcorn. So what I, I do is that I'm looking for innovative fish products because when you, when you talk of fish, it's smoked or fried or maybe steamed. That's mm. all that we know. Mm. But my, my uh, aim or what I want to see is to get a lot of fish products on the market, variety of right. fish of yeah. fish products. So, yeah. Because when you go, when you, you look at meat, beef, for instance, we have a lot of we have beef jerky, we have yeah. this, we have yeah. this, yeah. and there's so yeah. many varieties that you can choose from. But when it comes to fish, we smoke or fry, and then and then that it is it. it. And, and then it. So that that is my aim. Mm. So uh, maybe at some point we we'll have what minced fish. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> even even I have I've done a burger, fish burger. Ah. Yes, one of my exhibitions, I, I did a uh, fish burger. Okay, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> right, so let's come to the practicality of the challenges that you have to face. Um, let's start off with when you started, when you were doing the, um, the sausages from your kitchen and then upgrading to now having Kobe chunks and then yeah. all that. So when you started off in the kitchen, what would you say that were some of the things that you faced that... You just couldn't take it at some point. Well, um, maybe I could just start with the the manual nature. Or I don't know what the better term to use, but everything was manual. Yeah. Um, yeah. The fish, you have to cut off the head first and fill it in such a way that you don't lose much much of the flesh yeah and straight away after doing that 50 percent of your weight is gone, gone. The, sure. the head and then the, the bones so you you have to stand for a long long hours just doing the filleting and then when you finish you can mix into uh, mix into the the products that that you want to have so um i had a lot of initially even currently mm. because 
the technical know-how in fish processing is not here. So if I want to do something, I have to think, what, what else can I do? This, this thing is called f beef jerky. Can I do the same with fish? fish. Mm -hmm. So I have to go and try and do it myself. Of course, these days um, we have food research coming out with a lot of fish products. In fact, the fish, the Kobe in oil, for instance, and all that is coming from, from their end. But I have to think of, of these things and then go to them if I have mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. and then they will help me to formulate them. But it's not something so that... So when you say going to them, like the way you travel to Uganda, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you engage their services yeah. and then you sit with them with your idea, just like I also help others in yeah. building yeah. the idea. So this is what I think. So we all sit together. This is what I have done. No, it has to be done in this way because fish is this, this, that. So you can't just be in, in the comfort of your home and just go on the internet to research about it. No, you can. If I've done so much with that. Okay. But when it comes to the practical, practicality, because um, I didn't do um, any, any, I don't have any, I don't know how to put it, food technology. I don't have, I, I <laughs> at that time, my idea was on, was on, um, other things, so mm -hmm. banking and other things. Yeah. So I don't have the, the when it comes to handling fish okay. or even t food technology in general, I don't have it. Maybe I have to take a course in that. So I have okay. to go on the net and read. read. And when it comes to the composition of certain things, then you need the experts to tell you what to do. Otherwise, you might not be doing the right thing. Because it's food, I'm very particular. I don't want yeah. to just mix anything because... A little chemistry that I did would tell me that certain things react, even though they are all good for consumption. Mm -hmm. When you put them together, the chemical composition or whatever you have might not be good for the human uh, body or for consumption. Okay. So I'm very careful about what I want to put out. Yes, the idea is that I know um, precursor is good. I know um, ginger is good. I know garlic. But it doesn't mean you have to put it all together. It doesn't mean... The, yeah. Uh, what will be the effect? Yes. So when it gets to that point, when I know what I want to do, I just go to them so that I get the right thing done. Mm. Because it will be very serious if you put something there and it causes a lot of harm to yeah. your consumers. Uh, was there ever a point that you no, reported such? No, no. But, but I, did, I did science and, uh, in secondary school and I did chemistry. So I'm always... Give you an idea. I'm, I'm always mindful of that, yeah. that putting two things together can give some reaction that... You might not think, uh, you might not know. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, so I'm always mindful of that. Maybe so, that was why I had to do chemistry in those probably, days. <laughs> probably. So you can't just wake up and say you're going to go into fish farming then? No. Or processing fish processing, products? Processing, yes. Yeah. You know, once you are mixing, um, even the spices, all yes. the spices we consume, mm -hmm. but what is the reaction of putting certain, chemi certain spices together? What do you get? You know, sometimes you find something, certain things on social media. If you eat milk, if you milk yeah. with something, something, this yeah. is the effect. Yeah. And that is exactly uh, what... Is it I milk, mixing uh, uh, Coke with milk? Yes, yeah. yeah. And all that. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. Coke. Yeah. Even Coke. You tell me we use it in washing, um, um, in cleaning. Cleaning. Yes. Yeah, the, but we drink it. Bowls, and uh, I always tell myself, <laughs> so if, why is it that when I drink it, it doesn't uh, uh, affect my stomach because there's some reaction going on in my stomach which neutralizes whatever effect it has in the, in the toilet bowl and all that. That is my thinking, mm. yes. Okay. Yeah. So how many workers do you have now? I have five, but I have a casual one, so, so a total of seven. So um, the regular ones, we, are, we do the everyday work but then if I have a large order, for instance, and I need to do the filleting and I bring them on board and then they help with the filleting. But aside that, we, we do the, the processing. You've spoken quite a lot about we not being adequately equipped when it comes to the necessary things that we need in supporting fish farming or the uh, processing of fish products. Yeah. So then in your case, how are you getting support? How are you doing this? I take one day at a time. <laughs> it, it hasn't been easy. And even currently, I'm still doing certain things manually. Um, so my family supported me. I mean, they still support. 
uh, if I say my family, my husband and children, okay. and then I have my siblings and uh, also supporting. So one day at a time, sometimes um, it's a miracle mm. when, when I think. But then if I have to purchase, every year I, I try to buy an equipment. So I take a loan and then buy it. And then by the time the year ends, I would have finished paying. And then I think of something else to buy. But are you able to, 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 to put money aside for yourself no. from the business? I, I am able to sort all my workers, my everything out. All from the business? All from the business. Okay. But I Not take, from I, your own pocket? I take myself out oh, for so now. Oh, so you don't pay yourself? No, I don't pay myself. I rather put... <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep putting... I mean, the loan, for instance, that I... I, 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 I went on voluntary when I was 55. Okay. So it's a bit of When money. you were 55? When I was 55. Where? Where? So now you are more? Yes, I'm more. <laughs> hey, Aunt Smith, when you're more fit? You're very I'll be 60 this year. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. Very nice. Okay, so you went on a voluntary pension? Yes, yeah, so yeah. have all those bits of money, some little investment. So um, that's what I use. So, well, would you say it's, oh, lucrative, it's a lucrative business? Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. You would advise a lot of people. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes. You are training people. To, yeah, yeah. 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 So you yeah. would advise. Yes. Yes, it is. It is. And is Very the Ghanaian nice. market ready to accommodate a lot of uh, people going into fish farming and processing of fish farming products? Yes. I mean, fish products. Yes. So the fish sausages, the crackers... Um, but you know, when I talk of the Kobe, even though I'm selling in Ghana, it doesn't stay in Ghana because most of them send it to their relatives abroad. And currently, I'm even about signing about two co contracts to export the Kobe to UK and uh, oh, okay. the US because okay. that's where I sell. I sell a lot. Uh, you saw one of the pictures um, with the white lady. Yes. That's shop right in Philadelphia. Okay. They are trying to take some African products in their shops. And, and so that was the, the pictures that you saw. Oh, okay. But, but in Ghana... Um, we are finding a hard accepting products like this? No, we, we, we are excited about it. But, uh -huh. you know... We don't have the money. The head. <laughs> the, 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 because the head is off, I have a lot of people complaining that they want the full Kobe. Hey. Yes. My so that, that is on order because I feel that if yeah. you want Kobe, you can get from the market. But if I want to set myself apart, I want to do something that you will not find on the market. Yeah. And that will draw you to buy from yeah. me. So I'm even, uh, there's also another contract coming up with, with, a, with a company mm. for them to, to take the whole, the, to produce the Kobe for them. The four? For, no, in various forms. Mm. And they will distribute um, nationwide. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. But, but, but uh, yesterday, for instance, the powder and the chunks, were, that was the center of attraction for the Ghanaians here. But most of them, too, when they buy, say, oh, I have a sister in the UK. I'll send some to her. And then they also call and buy. So Ghana market is not as vibrant as what goes outside. outside. Okay. Yeah. Do you have an association that you belong to? A number of them, yes. A number of them. <laughs> About how many? <laughs> on top of my head, maybe three. I'm on the Ghana Aquaculture Association. Okay. I am on... Um, African Women in Agribusiness, that is AREA, for which I'm the president. I am on AWAFA N, that is African Women in Animal Resource Farming and Agribusiness Network. I'm the vice president. Okay. <laughs> and then yeah, some, 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 one, some of the groups are just WhatsApp groups, but these ones are really associations that um, I join. And, and how, is, how is the support system like? Okay, so uh, for Ghana Aquaculture uh, Association, for instance, um, the terrain is hard, the support is not there. So that's why we are trying to help ourselves, especially when we talk of fish, fish, fish farming. The, your, your highest cost is the, is the feed. 
-hmm. So the association is trying to find other ways of getting affordable feed so that the fish that we produce will also be affordable. So running workshops to, to collect ideas on the feed formulation, alternative feed formulation. So some of these are some of the support. And also, for instance, if you want to establish your fish farm, you, there are about three agencies that you have to get um, the permission from Water Resource, the Fishes Commission itself, and then EPA. And these things are very expensive. So we are trying to have a one-shop place where uh, you can go for the certificate and it will not be as, as expensive as having yeah, each all, three, all you them. Pay different you pay in different monies. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then for area, for instance, the African... Uh, African uh, women in agribusiness, um, capacity building. We do advocacy. Recently, we did advocacy on on um, biosecurity in animal animal farming, livestock farming, as you say. So there's a kind of support, and then the network, the network, and the and the um, among ourselves, we have the um, mentorship we have women yeah. who have excelled who are on the platform so we have a, a mentorship group so if you are young even if you are not young and you are even in business and you need advice we know who to to refer you to and all that so so if we don't support ourselves uh, it will be very difficult to 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 grow in business in ghana but you get support from government in any way for my business no no like with associations that you with, with all associations that you, are, you have in mind to do and are doing so um for area for instance i registered the, the group with ghana enterprise agency so from time to time they have programs capacity but they may be financial literacy or that kind of uh, uh, programs okay. and then we attend but in terms of other support for instance financial support like the grants, GA has a grant. If you apply and you qualify, uh, I, ha I have um, about two or three who have applied and and even well, maybe I should say this too. We um, GA has the support for FDA, for instance. You know, in the past it was very difficult to get your FDA certification, so they came up with a collaboration with FDA. So. You, you take your products to GEA, that's the Ghana Enterprise Agency. And then maybe sometimes within three months, four months, you have your certification. And that has really helped, especially the, the, those in the processing and in, in, okay. in, in area. Okay. So there's, some, there's, there's support. But you know, as human beings, we always want more. And when you talk of support, what readily comes to mind is financial support. Yeah. That is, is difficult. Not only on the government side, but also to we the 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 uh, players. If you have your records keeping done well, you are able to attract that kind of support. But sometimes, if you don't do it, so sometimes it's not. The, I worked in the bank before, so I know yeah, what I'm. Yeah. So sometimes it's not only the bank that should be blamed, but we ourselves because they want track record. So if they come and you don't have that track record, sometimes it's difficult for them to support you. Mm. So you have to do very well with the whole bookkeeping yeah, yes, and yeah. all that. Because okay. they, 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 would, okay. they, they don't work with you. So your records will determine how well you are doing and whether you'll be able to sustain or make enough even to pay them. At the end of the day, the bank is looking at how you are going to pay back the loan which is granted. So if they look through your books and your financials are okay, or sometimes it might not even be okay, but you have the regular records of it, it's very easy for them to decide on what, whether to give you and how much to, to, to be given to you. Right now, all I'm thinking about, what I'm thinking about mostly with what you just said is uh, entrepreneurs or business owners in this business who might not really have that deeper or higher education into the business that they are doing or the fish farming that they are into. Because maybe they might not be aware that this is how exactly you have to do something like this. So somebody like that, what would he do? What would she do? What so would so that, that is one when you, you are very active in associations, you will be able to, because sometimes it might not be the programs that the association is organizing, but you yourself mm. even putting a question there. 
I remember right. one of the platforms um, um, were bashing the banks, and I was sad because I knew <laughs> I knew that the banks were not totally to be blamed. Okay. So I gave them the the criteria for granting loans. They are looking at your, for instance, I talked about fish sausage. It's good. It's a good product. But are you able to sell well? Look at the environmental. So there are certain risks that they look at. Not only your financial risk. Even sometimes family, family, if it's a family business, they see the relationship between the family, if it's husband and wife, are you on good terms and all that? Because all these things af affect the, the, the business itself. So I gave the risks. Every business has risks. Yeah. I mean, everything. Yeah. As we sit here, yeah. the next minute, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But then they want to see how you are mitigating those risks. So you bring out all your risks and then you tell them, this is how I want to, to go about it. So one day I was there and then somebody sent me a thank you message that he did what I asked and he got the loan from the bank. So you have to know what the banks require and work towards it. It might be a year or two before you prepare yourself for that. Other than that, you sit in the dark and say that there's no support coming. Yeah, yes. yeah. But then yeah. You, you have to bring yourself out. You have to ask questions. You have to join groups. And then even if they are not giving you what you want, you have to demand from yeah. them and all that. But if you okay. sit quietly and you want... And just expect, expect that you might be dropped it, on your lap. No, it, it doesn't it happen. Work. It doesn't happen that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Okay. So for somebody that is interested in investing in your business, um, wanting to start something like this, uh, which area would you advise that a person starts from? Well, I would advise the person to come into processing. Okay. Uh, because I believe that um, there are a lot of fish farmers now. Like I mentioned, tilapia doesn't have any market issues. If, you, if I harvest tilapia one ton, two tons, three tons right now, I will be able to sell everything. Catfish is not coming up. They are struggling with the market. So I believe that if we don't go into processing to absorb all this, produce from the farmers, um, is, you're going to choke, the, the, uh, farming, the fish farming side is going to, so we have to get the processing and also well established. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should think of uh, processing, processing. Instead of going into the actual into farming. The, some will want to go and then, and then process themselves. I have one who came for, for, um, for me to train, he has his farm in a half -o. And uh, he also facing the challenge of selling. So he wants, he wants to do the restaurant. He wants to do the, he's doing catfish. So the sausages and then the crackers and other things. But, but I think that we will have to now turn our attention to processing, processing. of fish. Yeah. I can't remember that in, during the COVID era, um, after you know, the restrictions started easing up and then all that, when you go out and then you're looking for food to buy, and then all you would notice that quite a number of people we're investing a lot in catfish business. Yeah. It became a thing. Yeah. During the COVID yeah. era. Yeah. But it's just like now the number of people that are into catfishing is reducing. You have the whole point and kill and all that. But now it's it's reduced. No, it's not. It's it's, it's going up. There are lots more people because um tilapia is it's very um they can't take stress. It, they are very volatile. I mean, the least thing you start losing them. Catfish are more robust, and catfish is more. I stand for correction for those who are now doing their farming. But then when I was doing it, I believe that the catfish was more. Um, the return on your investment is better than the what you get from tilapia. So oh. you have a lot more because. Um, and it's very easy to set up too. So now you have a lot of people having the tarpaulin tanks yes. and then having yes. backyard yeah. in their yeah. homes and all that and doing the, yeah. the catfish. You cannot do that really with tilapia. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it expensive? Are your products expensive? So my Kobe, it's uh, 50 CDs a pack. For either of the, uh, either, yes. the powder yeah. or yeah. the chunks? Yeah. Okay. So the powder... There, the, those are the small strip the small. is five CDs. The oh, one, but okay. this one has 10 strips in the pack, and that is uh, 50 CDs. Okay, this the crackers, um, pricing of um, 10 CDs, the sausages are 40 CDs. You have four four big ones, and then you yeah. 
Then the others, as, as and when I start packaging, the prices will come out. <laughs> Abel, thank you so much for your time. Thank uh, you. Too. What word would you throw out there to people? Well, I would say that um, we will have to be very... Now, the key word is intentional. Yeah. There's nothing new in this world. Everything that you see here, it's something that has been produced already. But then, if you look at it, you copy it. But modify it. Try to yeah, add your, try, own, yeah. your own idea to it. Change the face of it. And then you produce and then put it out. Okay. Mabel Ibrudon Kwashi, my guest for Women in Business today. She is the CEO, the owner of Aquatic Food Limited, and she's producing amazing fish products, okay? And she's somewhat made it seem quite simple for you to venture into pro uh, processing fish uh, products. So if you're interested in this, I mean, you, if you're just joining, you can go to our Facebook page, just, you know, scroll on back and start a conversation with us and learn quite a lot. But those of you who started with us, I know that you have just said now a whole lot and all the best to you if you want to venture into such a business. Abel, thank you so much for your time thank and you have a wonderful me. morning. Thank you. Viewers, coming up next, we have entertainment. And uh, you know that one of our babies is still here, uh, Big Chef Season 3. So we're going to delve into the very first episode that took place yesterday. And I know that you and I will have a lot of fun. So stay tuned.